Good morning, everybody. This is Fred Meissner with the FredReport.com speaking on behalf of the Market Technicians Association in the ongoing video series of technical tools. Today we are going to discuss the ADX indicator, and uh, this is sort of a difficult indicator to get because unlike a lot of indicators that you see on the market, this does not necessarily measure overbought and oversold conditions. Rather, it indicates uh, strength of trend or lack thereof. So we'll get right into it here and uh, let's talk first of all about what is the ADX. It is an indicator to measure strength of trend. People have tried to use it as an overbought or oversold indicator. That is not a good use of this and ultimately it will lead you astray. A very low reading on the ADX suggests a trading range is in effect that could be ending and a high reading on the ADX suggests a trending move that could be ending and turning into a trading range. What we do with this indicator is we use the indicator to determine whether a trend following or range trading strategy should be used. For example, if you're going to use a trend following system, use moving averages for example. If you're going to use a range trading methodology, take a look at something like the stochastic oscillator or one of the other momentum tools. Uh, to deconstruct the ADX, it is, an, it is an oscillator that fluctuates between 0 and 100. Readings above 60 are relatively rare, and low readings below 20 indicate a weak trend. Higher readings above 40 usually enter, indicate a strong trend. If you see a rating at 20 that's starting to move towards 30, and you initiate a trade with a trend-following system, generally the meat and the profit in your move will occur when the indicator moves from 40 to 50, let's say, and close to 60. The ADX line is also laid over something called the Directional Movement Index, or DMI, to indicate a strength of trend. This is a rather esoteric use of the indicator. I am not a big fan of the DMI, and for my money, you'll have better results if you actually take a look at the ADX alone without the DMI. Basically, Wells Wilder, back in the 70s, tried to create an automatic trading system using the ADX combined with direct movement. I don't think that was successful. Wilder was a brilliant man, but not everything he did worked as effectively, and there's some other tools now you can use with the ADX. One other thing I'm going to mention about the ADX for you guys. Generally, the 14 period ADX is what is given as the default on your Reuters system and on other systems, but you should experiment with shorter and longer time periods for the ADX. What I found on the ADX myself is I use a 7 period, which is half of 14, which is half of what most of the momentum tools use. It gives a few more signals and it seems to work a little bit better. To use the indicator in a trading, trending methodology, when you see the indicator at a low level and in a base, uh, one would use a trend following system, i.e. start taking signals when moving averages cross, or use your parabolic stop and reverse system to take signals on the direction of the trend that you see. In other words, use that to determine your trend, but believe that you're going to have a trend following move, especially if you've been in a range for a while. We'll take a look at a couple of examples. Note that I've marked the chart of the ADX at the bottom when it's down below the 10 area as a trending move is likely. And note when we get up in that 40 area, I've marked it as being a trading range is getting ready to occur. And if you look at that ADX, you can see the first big trending move on the chart, which basically occurred from March to May, was indicated by the low ADX figure in the 10 area. And when that ADX moved up close to that 40 area, you can't had come down to support, and the market started to trade sideways from that period on. Uh, not all of these signals work. You see a low ADX reading in September. It looks like that's still a trading range now, but let's see how that looks a few days or weeks down the road. This stock may, by the time you get this, actually have started to make a trending move. 
application of the indicator in a trading range. Use a range trading methodology, buying at support, selling at resistance, something like the stochastics or other oscillators. But when you use this trading range methodology, the indicator on the ADX will be at a high level, usually in the 40s, and it will start to move down from that level. When that moves down to 20 or below, you probably want to be ready to switch out of a trading rate methodology and back into a trending methodology once again. We're going to show you the same chart and again point out to you here the trading range that occurred after the indicator got up into that trading range area. You can also see trading range in December, January, February when the ADX was at a high level. As it fell to a low level, you can see the trending move start. One of the things to remember about markets and stocks in general is a normal market or stock will move from a period of trading range into a trending period and then after that trend is over it will consolidate that trend by moving into another trading range. That's what this system is trying to capture. Um, we show another little example here just to show a little bit clearer how the trending move could occur and did occur and how that trading range started. You can see it's not exact, but it does give you a pretty good indication if you're using another methodology and you're starting to get into one of those extreme areas that sort of serves as a warning sign to uh, cover your positions and look to use another methodology. We're going to use natural gas again, the UNG, which has had a very big trading mo trending move this last year, 2010. Note again how once that ADX got down into the 10 area, mid-February, March, you got a nice move that trended on the ADX and, and on natural gas from 9 to roughly 7. And then when you got up into that trading range area, you can see again sideways movement for a period of months, then down into the trending area again again in April and another nice down move that when you got up into the 30 looks like it started to build another bit of a trading range. Have to tell you on this indicator, it is not exact, it is not precise, it's not really one of the more popular indicators that people use, but we're including it for completeness, and there are times when it gives very good signals. We note that this presentation was made possible by the Market Technicians Association. Please visit the MTA online at www.mta.org. This is Fred Meissner from The Fred Report, www.thefredreport.com. As I mentioned, I will respond to any questions directed to me personally at the Market Technicians Association. We thank you and wish you a good week of trading.